Okay, I think that we are ready to go. So, as I mentioned, I welcome all of who just uh, joined into our tech talk. So, this is going to be like our tech talk with the team that's the stuff that web streams are made of. This is part of our remote engineer uh, global job fair. Uh, so, this right now we have Devon. So we'll, we will learn a little bit about web streams, API, and some practical uh, applications of web streams. Uh, so don't worry about making notes immediately because uh, we will send the recording for you. So you don't have to, to, to rush. You just have to pay attention to, to the phone words. So let's welcome our special guest today. So here with us is Devon. He's a staff Y engineer at LinkedIn. Devon started in animation for TV shows such as Nickelodeon and Warner. Uh, his passion led him as a software engineer to build beautiful web experience. And at LinkedIn, he builds a next generation of learning tools for the LinkedIn learning platform. So no further information. So Devon, the stage is all yours. All right, thank you very much for the warm introduction and uh, hello everybody. Let me just get my self set up here with uh, the presentation. So hopefully everyone can see that now. All right. So um, yeah, good morning, uh, afternoon or evening everybody. Um, this is of course, depending on where you might be right now. Um, definitely saw a lot of countries in that chat. So uh, yeah, great to see uh, such a such a great turnout today. Um, definitely, you know, welcome to the ARC uh, Remote Engineering Global Job Fair. Uh, and I'd just like to start by saying thank you to our gracious hosts for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, and thank you to all of you as well for, you know, thanks for spending the time with me. So I'm going to be talking to you about uh, web streams. Uh, but first, a little bit about myself. I know there was kind of a, a bit of an introduction there already, um, like like, you know, like was introduced. Basically, I'm a staff software engineer at UI at LinkedIn. Um, I generally split my time between product engineering on the LinkedIn learning platform, uh, building and maintaining our end-to-end -end testing infrastructure, and worrying a little bit too much about page speed. Other than work, um, I live in Oakland, California with my wife and my four-year-old son. Uh, and our little family is growing. I'm actually going to be welcoming another son in June. But that's enough about me. Uh, let's see what we're going to learn about today. So first, I'm going to be giving you a very short history lesson on web streaming. Then we're going to learn a bit about how streaming works on the server and the client, uh, how they're the same and how they're different. Then we're going to build something. Um, well, it's not, I mean, that's not completely true. We're actually going to be building things all throughout this presentation. There's actually quite a bit of a live coding component. Um, so yeah, I definitely like to set myself up to, for a challenge. Um, and it's a lot of stuff to learn. So let's jump right in. All right, we're going to start off with a quick, and I mean very quick, history of data streaming. So data streaming has been around since probably the early 90s. Um, and in the context of the web, it has been in the web, in web browsers since the beginning, really. Uh, assets like HTML and images are streamed to the client. Uh, so if you joined us via desktop for this conference, then you've already been introduced to streaming today. Now, in 1995, video streaming was introduced to the world through an application called RealPlayer, uh, which I'm actually old enough to remember. Uh, next, let's fast forward to 2014, uh, when the WetWG first adopted the spec for web streams. The goal here was to provide a unified public API for streams. Uh, very quickly after that, streaming is introduced into the JavaScript public API for the first time with the Fetch API, uh, which was meant to replace the XML HTTP request API for fetching resources. And lastly, in April of, of last year, uh, streams were made publicly available in Node through the Web Streams API. But streams have actually been with us uh, the whole time in Node.js. Each of these libraries uses streaming for different purposes uh, and has since the beginning. However, these libraries leverage the older streams API. The new Web Streams API is based on the WetWG spec. So just a quick note, uh, the old Node.js Streams API isn't going to be removed from Node and currently still powers many of the libraries I just mentioned. 
So the two APIs are not directly compatible with each, with each other. So to ensure compatibility, uh, the to web and from web methods have been added to all stream classes in both the old and the new APIs. Uh, and we're going to see this in action a little later. OK. Now that we have all that out of the way, uh, let's continue and talk about how streams work on the server uh, using Node.js as our server of choice. Okay, now there's something I really haven't addressed yet. Um, it's kind of important. I probably should have done this maybe a little earlier, uh, but now is kind of a good uh, time as any to introduce you to streaming itself. So, you know, what is streaming, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Uh, streaming is the process of breaking up a resource into smaller chunks and sending those chunks in a continuous flow or stream to a destination. Okay, cool. So I'm glad we got that out of the way. Okay, well, I mean, there's a few more things we should probably talk about. So a chunk uh, in regards to streaming is a single piece of binary data. Now, a chunk is not usually the smallest piece of data possible. The size of a chunk depends on many factors, including the type of data being streamed, the destination, and how many stops it's going to be making along the way. So streaming chunks of video over a network is going to look a little different uh, than streaming chunks of CSV data to a database. Now, regardless of the application, at the core of all streams are buffers. So buffers are a data structure that allocates a fixed memory location and stores binary data. So buffers are where we store these chunks. OK, so chunks are what we stream. And there are many different streams to answer the question of how we stream. However, there are three different types of streams that are most commonly used. The first is the readable stream. So a readable stream is our data source. And there are two types of data sources, a push and a pull source. As the name suggests, uh, push, push sources start pushing data when the stream is created and will continue to push data even when you aren't listening for it. WebSockets and streaming video are examples of push sources. Now, pull sources need to be asked to send data. So things like HTTP requests are pull sources. Now, you can T a readable stream, so kind of like the letter T. Uh, Teeing a stream splits that stream into two new streams. Each will send uh, the same data. Uh, this could be useful for many reasons. You know, Maybe you want to send one stream to the client and another to a logger. Uh, there's all sorts of applications you can do by splitting two streams. All right, now the second type of stream is a writable stream. I bet you didn't see that coming, did you? Readable to writable, all right. Well, writable stream, a writable stream is a, is a destination for all of our chunks. So chunks are written to an underlying sync. And an underlying sync can be anything, really. A file, a database, the DOM, whatever your heart desires, really. And the third type of stream is a transform stream. Now, a transform stream is an intermediary between a readable and a writable stream. It has both a readable and a writable side. So chunks come in the writable side, are transformed by the transform method, and then come out the readable side. So the transform method is completely optional as well. A transform stream without a transform method is known as an identity stream, and it has many uses, um, some of which we'll actually see later. OK, so those are the three most common types of streams. And like I mentioned before, there are many different types of streams. So here are two less common but very useful streams, uh, duplex streams and transferable streams. Now, duplex streams have readable and writable pair as well uh, that represent the two sides of a single resources. So WebSockets are an example of a duplex stream. You can simultaneously read and write from a WebSocket between a shared resource. Now, a transferable stream is also a read-write pair, uh, where one side is in a different realm than the other. And I want to focus for a second on the transferable stream, because it has a lot of uses when it comes to performing, uh, performing CPU-bound tasks. So a CPU-bound task is anything that hogs CPU cycles. So things like image manipulation, video editing, gaming, these all perform very complex operations. Now, when we're thinking about Node, uh, Node runs JavaScript on a single thread. Uh, and CPU-bound tasks can become a bottleneck for that thread. Now, Node uses an event loop to make things a little asynchronous. 
But even using promises won't really solve our problem since our code will just be offloaded to the promise where we will still need to wait for it to execute on the main thread before using the results. So to solve this problem, we can make use of worker threads. And while Node.js is single-threaded when it comes to JavaScript ex execution, it actually does have a total of seven threads. Now, we can't actually use these threads directly since they're actually privately used by Node.js and V8, but we can access them sort of indirectly using worker threads. And this is where our transferable stream actually comes in handy. Now, this isn't a talk about worker threads. Uh, it's all about streams. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about them, but here are the basics, really. The main thread will spawn a new thread with its own V8 and event loop. Uh, workers communicate with the parent and vice versa uh, using the post message API. Now, I mentioned before that a transferable stream uh, has one readable stream and one writable stream in different realms. Now, what, this is what I kind of meant by a realm. One end of the stream is in the parent thread and one is in the worker. Now, the chunks of data can't be transferred by pointer reference, right? So they can't be, you know, they can't be transferred as is from the parent to the worker. Um, they are cloned according to what is known as the structured clone algorithm. Uh, now, this is responsible for cloning complex objects. Uh, however, there are some things that can't be cloned. So you need to be careful with what you are transferring. The algorithm cannot clone functions or DOM nodes, and it also doesn't walk the prototype chain. So property descriptors, getters, setters are not copied over. We are going to see a live example of how to use worker threads for streaming later. I keep saying everything's gonna be later, and it is. All right, so the last thing I need to talk about before we uh, get to our first round of coding is piping. Now, streams were meant for piping, piping to and through other streams. When several streams are piped together, they form a pipe chain. Now, the time it takes to process a chunk in each stream uh, could be very different. If the underlying source of a readable stream reads data faster than the underlying sync of a writable stream can write, uh, then there's going to be an issue when the writable stream receives more chunks than it can handle. To solve this problem, streams use a method called back pressure, whereby a, sig a signal is propagated back through the chain to tell the source to slow down a bit. Now, the mechanism that determines how back pressure is applied is called the queuing strategy. Each stream comes with its own default queuing strategy, and it works great for most cases. Uh, so, you know, likely you're not going to need to write a custom queuing strategy. We're not going to really write one today. Again, most of the time, you're not really going to need it. But if you do need it, it does help to understand how chunks are queued in a stream. So every stream has an internal queue, which is based off a queue with size as a data structure. Each chunk takes a spot in the queue and is labeled with its determined size. So when you are creating a new stream, you can pass a second argument, an object that defines a size method for determining the size of a chunk, and a high watermark property that specifies the maximum value of all chunks in the queue. So once the high watermark is reached, this is when back pressure starts to be applied. All right, so that is probably more than enough learning for now. Um, and while things are still fresh in your mind, uh, let's take a moment and we're gonna start building something. All right, probably not what you were expecting, but bear with me on this. Uh, we're gonna build a service that works with a large data set containing artist and song data. Now the file in reality is only 22 megabytes, but we're gonna pretend it's really, really big. Because um, if we actually did work with a sufficiently large file on the on the, this laptop I'm running during the presentation, uh, I probably wouldn't have enough time to get to the cool stuff I wanted to show you while things were processing. So for now, we're just going to live in a world of make believe. But I digress. Uh, we are going to use a data set containing artists and song data, like I said, uh, and we're going to stream it, transform it, and make it a little more cat friendly. Now I'll elaborate on this in a little bit. Uh, and then we're gonna use this stream in a multitude of different ways throughout this talk. Okay, so the data currently looks like lines of this, and we would like to get into a, something a little more web friendly. 
And we're going to take the song name and replace a random word in the song with cat. And this is what I meant with uh, more cat friendly, nothing, nothing too crazy. It's just gonna look like this afterwards. All right, now when we say web friendly, I would normally mean JSON. However, since streaming data comes in chunks and those chunks may or may not be split cleanly along a complete piece of JSON, it can be a little tedious transforming it into valid JSON. So for this reason, a new standard of JSON was created for streaming called new line delimited JSON. Uh, and it allows you to put each record on a new line uh, each, and each of these lines can contain any valid JSON structure. And that also includes nesting. So you can actually nest, uh, you can nest JSON all, in, all inside any one of these lines, but basically everything should stay on the same line. So readability is completely destroyed, but in terms of how we process this uh, in a stream, it's actually gonna make things a lot easier and you'll see that soon. All right, so now we're really gonna start building something. So I'm gonna switch over to VS Code quickly. Bear with me a little bit. It's my first time using this platform. So uh, let's just see. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be making a stream that's gonna sort of catify um, our, our, catify our big data set. So we have the data set here. In the input, you can see it's a bunch of lines. I think it's about maybe 20,000 20, lines of this. Um, now let's get back to our stream. So there's a couple things we want to do. So when you start reading a file from, uh, when you start reading a file in a stream, the chunks come in in, you know, varying different sizes. So you're not going to just get a clean line by line every time you open a file, depending on how many processes you have, how you know the speed of things, you're going to get chunks of varying sizes coming through your streams. So what we want to do first is we want to create a transform stream uh, that's going to allow us to basically um, split up those chunks into a line by into line by line because our each line of our data set as we can see as i said before this actually each line of our data set is an actual record so um we are going to have our transform here so this is the transform method i was talking about it comes with you get a chunk and a controller when you get this. The controller is used to control the stream itself. So you can enqueue chunks into the stream. You can abort the stream. Uh, also, you know, that this basically helps to control the actual stream itself. And the chunk, of course, is every chunk we have. So we want to figure out how many uh, new lines we have. And so we want to figure out this is basically. This is going to help us to determine whether we have. Um, it's going to help us determine whether we have a stray line, right? So the thing is, is we may not we may not end up with our um, like a clean separation in our data. We may end up in the we may end up with one of our chunks in the middle of a piece of data. So we just want to determine since each of our records is uh, separated by. Sorry. Each of our data is separated by a new line. We should have as many pieces of data by the end of this as we have new lines. Thanks. Okay, let me just get this. Okay. Um, and then we want to get the line, we want to figure out how many lines we do have. We're gonna split on our new lines, okay? So, let me just get this set up. So, when we enqueue a chunk, we're actually we're sending it into the stream, right? Oops. we're doing here is so so like I said before we may end up with a stray line in our code so we want to make sure that we account for that in the next chunk that we receive 
if we have a if we have a split line in the first chunk, we basically we're going to we're eventually going we're going to save that chunk that's only a half line, and then we're going to look at the next chunk, and you know the next chunk should have the other half of the line, and so what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, prepend our chunk with this uh, straight line, basically this half line, so that basically marries the two together. Okay, so we got that. All right, now. Um, hi, Devon, sorry yeah. to interrupt, uh, but it's just a thing that our participants are um, asking in the chat. Uh, there is a way that we can make uh, the lines and, and the letter a little bit bigger. To yeah, sorry about that. I usually do that at the beginning. Right. Forgot to. Is that is that better? Is that better, or one would one more do? Uh, do you think that's better, guys? Just let me know if you prefer. Oh, they ask for one more. One more. <laughs> right. Yes, I think that now is good. <laughs> okay. Let's Thank you. Squish these down a little bit. All right. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, you know, I'm just gonna copy and paste some of the code I got this one, we'll explain it instead of writing it all out directly. So this is kind of from our finished file, but basically what we have here is, so like I said, if we have a stray line, then we wanna basically prepend our first line of our split data with that stray line, then we want to reset that stray line to null, so if we, you know, so we can get ready for the next stray line if we have it, right? Now, the reason we split our, you know, the reason we wanted to check how many new lines we had versus, you know, how many actual lines we had is if if we have more lines than we actually have new line characters, uh, then we have a stray line, and basically we want to just pop off, you know, uh, we want to pop off the last line of our um, of our array here and just put that in our stray line. And then basically we want to go through each line and enqueue it line by line. So what this is going to do is basically split up all of our chunks of all of our pieces here into single records and then feed it line by line to our next stream so that we can work with each record in a consistent fashion, right? Each record will be an actual record. Um, all right. And so this last one basically is saying maybe we don't, if. This, this one here is, uh, sorry, this one up here is literally just kind of a, an edge case. I don't even, I'm probably not maybe worth in, uh, including sometimes, but you know, just for illustrative purposes, just in case is the edge case. Uh, if we end up having our very last chunk contain a half line, then we're not gonna have any lines of le uh, line lengths, right? But we might have our chunk that actually, you know, does, uh, is a line. Then basically what we're saying is like, this very last chunk could be just a last half line. So just, you know, just prepend it with stray line and send it on its way. Um, and that's what that really is for. Okay, now to our Catify transform. Um, so this one's, you know, this one's a little simpler, um, but basically we want to, again, another transform stream. Transform streams, we, you know, we do use a lot, right? Um, this is basically doing a lot of the work for us. Okay, write another transform, basically. Um, yep. and. Once again, I'm just going to copy and paste for the interest of time. So I'm not writing everything out, but I will explain each piece that I'm doing. So right now we're basically, you know, like I said, we have our separator characters. We have our separator uh, uh, pieces here. We're just splitting by the by the separator, getting the artist and song data. Uh, this is this is where we're kind of randomly choosing a word. We're just splitting on the spaces, randomly choosing a word and replacing with cat. Nothing special here, really. Um, just replacing a single word in our song uh, text with the word cat. And so then we re we rejoin these by their separator and enqueue it to the next stream uh, so that we can get our modified data. And then this is going to go into our ndjson, our new line delimited JSON transformer. 
And we have our next transform stream. Okay, and this one's also pretty simple. So you know, because we did, because we did the job of splitting things line by line um, first off and making them consistent, it's really easy to process. So the reason we, you know, like, like I said before, with in, in new line delimited JSON, it makes things a lot easier to um, to stream somewhere, right? So all I'm really doing is creating a new record, a new you know, a new JSON record, and basically enqueuing that record as is with a line, uh, with a new with a line delimiter. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to construct like an entire array with a, you know, opening and closing brackets and putting each one on, uh, you know, and then stringifying a record for this. But basically, you know, um, we get everything, you know, we have everything stringified on, on one line and we're going to see how this is going to work soon. Oh, wait, I put that in the wrong place. That's not going to work very well. All right, there we go. So that's our transform. Okay, now it's time to put our stream together, all right? And this, uh, this, this actually is, you know, now that we have, so the good thing about doing this now, when you're creating your transform streams, don't try and do too much, right? You want to do, you want each one to sort of have a, a, an intention, right? So this one is specifically just splitting up our, you know, our extreme line by line. Uh, this one is specifically just, you know, catifying our, our line, right? We're not trying to also translate it into JSON. And then you know we're transforming into into, J, into new line delimited JSON here. Each transform stream has a single kind of concern that it's uh, that it, that it worries about, and that's it. And so the only thing we need to do here, so this is for us. We're gonna because we're gonna be working with this in multiple different places. Um, I created a function that basically is gonna take in a read stream and a write stream. So our source, our data source and our data destination, uh, because like I said, we're gonna be doing a lot of different things with this. Uh, particular stream, we may be getting our read stream might be uh, a like a, a request from a browser. It might be uh, a, you know a file stream from Node, and our write stream could be you know another file, uh, or it might be you know it might be writing to the DOM. So you know we we don't want to specify that yet, but basically we're going to be getting a read stream, and then we're going to just basically just pipe through. Each one of our, of our transforms, right? We're going to get a new one from each one, piping through again to our Catify stream, Catify transform. Sorry, problem with live coding sometimes, but pipe through. We want to pipe through here to our and to our ND JSON transform. And the last one we're going to pipe through. Well, actually, no, we're not going to do that yet. We'll do that a little later. But so we'll pipe through to our write stream here, right? So that's our destination. So basically, the data comes in through our read stream, goes through a number of different transformations, and then ultimately goes into our write stream. So let's do a very simple example here. I have a, basically we're going to read from a file. So what we're going to do here, and this is this is where you're going to see sort of the to and from web um, in action. So basically, you know, we want to create our read stream. So what we're going to do is we're going to read from our input file here, right? And now we don't have to create our own readable stream for this, basically. Um, Node.js uh, in the file system module actually has uh, create and read stream and create write stream functions that actually create a stream from an input file, an input file. So in our case, text file, then you want to specify coding maybe. I think the default is UTF-8, but you know, just in case. Specify UTF-8, there we go, right? So we're creating a read stream here. Um, now this actually does create a readable stream, but like I, you know, like I said, it creates an actual readable, which is a, which is from the old stream module, right? And so this, if we spent if we fed this straight to our Catify stream as a read stream. As a read stream input, it would it, it's going to break, right? Because the these are web streams from our web stream module right here. So uh, that probably would have been good to highlight. But basically, this is how you import from the actual web stream API. Uh, you know, namespace to node, and then it's the stream a stream, but uh, slash web. 
And the reason they did that is, again, because we're not getting rid of the original stream API. So this is more, merely an extension of it. Now, again, we're, we're importing this from stream. So we actually have to convert our read stream into um, a web stream. And it's as, it's as easy as just importing readable from our stream and then just using the to web function. That's it. Now we have. Now we can work with a. Uh, we can work with a readable stream. We'll do the same thing for our write stream. Basically, we're going to do a writable dot to web, and we're going to create a write stream to an output file. When you're working with NDJSON, you should you know use that as the file extension. NDJSON is the official file extension that we would use. Basically, we have our read stream. We have our write stream. Hopefully, if I've done this all correctly, you know, we should be able to. Oh, of course. Let's see, what did I do? All right, I just didn't create a new one. Bear with me here. I can always pull in that finished one if I need to. Oops. I'm oh, sorry, I just uh, clicked something and it took away my, uh... there we go. Okay, let's try this again. All right, you know what? Let's just take this from our, <laughs> Take this from our finish. My apologies. You know, this is always the. Okay, there we go. So that's working. All good. Um, and we can see here that we're getting our output JSON right here. All right. So you can see it's being it's being set line by line. We have our cat transform things that we transform this into actual JSON. So we're taking our input file here of all of these. And we're outputting, it. and that's finished. I mean, that's finished pretty quick, right? That was twenty-one thousand lines, twenty-one megabytes done in you know like a second or so. Didn't benchmark this, but basically, yeah, it, it happens pretty quick. So it's actually pretty, it's pretty efficient at doing this, right? Um, now, there's a lot. You know, usually when you're going to be working street with streams, you're going to be working with a lot more data than this. Um, but yes, that's that basically helps us right there. So that's kind of um, what I was talking about. Now, like I said. There's a lot of times when we're going to be working with data that is far larger than this. And as I had mentioned before, when we're thinking about CPU bound processes, there might be a lot of times when we end up working with things that are just far more complicated than this, far more complicated transforms. And even if the data set isn't, you know, isn't that big per se, um, we can still get a lot of blocking uh, and waiting just because of complex transforms. Now we're not going to do any complex transforms, but what we are going to do is we're going to take a look uh, at how we actually, you know, work with web. Uh, so with uh, with our worker threads here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take in. As you can see here, I have a Catify stream in worker, and this also takes the read and write stream. But what we're going to do is instead of just piping through everything here on the main thread. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new thread so that we can perform our transforms on in, in a new thread and then get the data back afterwards. So what this is going to require, it's going to require us to work with the web or sorry, the, sorry, the worker threads uh, module. So like I said, um, this is, isn't necessarily about worker threads. If you want to look up more about worker threads, you can. Um, but basically, this is the way to create a new worker. So um, each, you know, each worker basically works on a file. Um, you can either create a separate file to give to the worker to work with, uh, which is just the, you know, the basically the JavaScript that it's going to actually execute in that thread, um, or you can actually just, you know, you can do all of your threading in the same uh, in the same file. So you can just feed back this file. There's actually. Uh, is main thread basically that can tell you if you're on the main thread or in a worker thread. Um, we're not going to use that. We we do have a separate file we're going to actually build for this just for the you know just for simplicity's sake, uh, for things when we work with stuff later. So I have a worker js file here. 
Now, this is what I, I mentioned before, when we build a transform stream, um, so we'll so we'll work on this. Sorry, we'll, we'll look at this a little, in a little bit. Um, my, so actually, I'll talk about transform streams a little later. Um, but right now, so we have the right stream, right? So instead of just piping through, you can actually you know you can read you can read and write a stream manually by using the. By using the get writer function, so this gets a writer, um, which will actually, you know, when you call the write function on it, um, it will write data to the, it'll write your data to the underlying source. So our worker, like I said, it works with post message. And we're going to basically get data back from our worker and write it to our write it to our uh, source, our underlying sync. Sorry. And then when the worker is spawned, we send it. You can send an initial post message. And this is what we mean by transferable stream. We can actually transfer the stream itself as is um, our read stream directly to the worker, and this means that it'll pull it pulls data from the main thread and sends it through. To the worker thread, it you know web streams actually know how to do this on their own. All right, and we're going to go to our worker. Um, interest of time, I'm just going to copy paste and explain. But basically, this is uh, so we get our data, and our data, the data packet is the actual read stream itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to pipe this through. We're going to pipe our read stream through all of our transforms. And then I'm doing something a little different here. We're piping to a writable. And this is what I mean when I'm talking about identity streams. So we created a transform stream so that we could just get a readable and writable pair from a transform stream. No transform is occurring, but now we have, we have sort of a connected input and output that we can use to our advantage. Basically, um, we're piping this to the writable side of our transform stream. So basically, all the, all the new lines are going to come into the writable. And then so that we can work directly with our post message, we're actually going to loop over. So if, if, if anyone's ever seen this before, you can actually, you can actually loop over uh, in Node. You can actually loop over uh, promises. So readable, you can loop, loop over iterables that, re, you know, that return promises. Um, so the readable itself is an iterable. The, the, the read function itself is, uh, returns a promise. So we're actually going to loop through, get our chunks out of our readable. And then we're going to take each chunk and send a post message back to our main thread. And then after we're done, we want to make sure that we close the thread. So when we go back to our Catify stream, if we go back to our file read, we can actually do this. this. Catify worker. And you know, don't really notice anything here. Um, you know, the time is probably about the same. There's no, there's no cost benefit because of our simple operations to actually spawning workers. In fact, if you are not doing something that is CPU blocking, it's best not to use threads uh, because the setup and teardown of threads will actually add to the overhead. Um, so in our case, this would be less efficient. But let's say we were doing some complicated video processing. Um, you know, maybe we're streaming data from. Um, maybe we're streaming data from a client to here. We want to process the video and send it back to the client. You know, it's always it would be a good place to use your worker threads here. And so, what are we doing, right? Um, we are accepting our read stream and our worker. We're doing our transforms. We're piping it back to an identity transform stream, which has a readable and writable side. We are reading each chunk as it comes out of our, you know, comes into our writable, comes out of our readable, and we're using that. Uh, to post message back to our chunk. Now you could probably create your own, you know, maybe writable stream, and then just use and and you know the streams the streams write method itself could probably um, you know post to the parent like post to the parent thread. Uh, that's possible too, but this is probably a little more succinct, um, you know, than creating an entire new transforms or another entire new write stream just for that purpose. All right, so let's get back to our 
web streams. Okay, so we built something. All right, that's enough for web streaming on the server. Let's talk about web streaming on the client. Now, the best thing about web streaming on the client is, and kind of the whole thing I'm trying to, you know, hammer into you in this thing is, we also use the WebStreams API, um, which is a unified API. So the client actually uses the WebStreams API, like I mentioned before. So we don't really have anything new to learn about streams themselves, but the client does offer us a chance to learn about how we can work with streams across a network. So and one of the first, uh, one of the first ways we do that is the response stream. So the response stream has been around since the fetch API was introduced. The actual body property of a fetch response is a readable stream. Uh, so we can see this here, right? We actually can get uh, get reference to um, our readable stream that comes out, get a reader, and actually read. Um, re you know, we can actually read chunks from that stream as it comes in. So the stream sends um, array buffers as chunks, and the size and frequency of those chunks depend on the network. So you'll get smaller chunks more frequently on a slower network, and you'll get larger chunks less often on a faster network. And the response stream can allow us to start reading and parsing the response before it has actually finished. And this can allow us to do all sorts of cool stuff, like progressively rendering HTML on an initial page load uh, and reading data from AJAX calls before they have finished. All right, so we're actually going to hop back in um, and take a look at how this, how this actually works. Um, and so we're going to go back to VS Code. Um, try to keep this in the interest of time. Let's, oops. Go back to VS Code. All right, so I have a web API already set up and running, but and then I have this API that I've set up. So basically, we have you know we have an Express app set up very you know roughly. Um, we when we're uh, the 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 web API is actually calling to the to the you know oh, sorry the, the web front end is going to be calling to this web API. So we set up cores here, um, and then we're running our app. And so when we get Basically, when we call get to our um, server, what we want to do is we want to actually stream uh, our data back to the server. So what we're going to do um, is we are going to do something very simple. We'll set. I'll just get this. So because we're going to be streaming our ND JSON, our new line delimited JSON back, um, we're going to set our header to actually with a content type of application X. ND JSON, which is the valid media type for new line delimited JSON. And so we're going to do the same thing we did before um, by, you know, reading, we're going to read our file, we're going to read from our file, same thing as I had in the read file example. Um, the input file is going to be here. And then basically, what we're going to do instead of writing to an actual file, we're going to actually be writing to our response. And now response again uh, is actually a standard stream from the original stream API. So, but we can actually again use our to web function and turn our response uh, stream into uh, an actual web stream, uh, web read or sorry, uh, writable stream from the web streams API, right? Um, and now, what does this look like in practice? So, if we go to, I have my public, so our app JS here. Um, what we need to do again. So once again, I need to line by line transform. So there's nothing new here. Basically, we're going to take our existing line by line transform. Now, the reason I can't just import it uh, directly is because it is on Node. There are obviously ways to make Node and JS um, you know, APIs work together on, on the browser, but I'm, I'm not going to do this for, I'm not going to do that for this, um, you know, for this example. We're just going to copy this as the exact same line by line transform we had before to read our new line delimited JSON. Um, and then what we're actually going to do here um, is we're going to actually, we're going to append all the, we're going to append all the lines we get uh, from our file into the DOM. So what I have is an HTML file. Um, right here. And basically, I've got, um, so I've got a list right here. We're going to append it to this list. And we're actually going to keep a count of how many lines we've, or how many file, or sorry, records we've actually read. Um, 
so this is our append to list stream. So we're going to create a writable stream. And like I said before, the underlying sync can be whatever, right? Um, in this case, what we're going to do uh, is we're actually going to parse our chunk, our, our new line delimited chunk into a piece of actual JSON. We're going to get reference to our list element. Uh, and then we're just literally going to create a record. Um, so we're going to create a new list element, a list item element. We have reference to our actual unordered list here. Uh, we're just going to create a, a small record. And our underlying sync is actually the DOM. So we're just going to append to the DOM every time we get a new record. Uh, it's a little simplistic, probably not super efficient. But for illustrative purposes, this works very well. Now, we are working with 20,000 lines. So that can fill up and you know ruin a DOM pretty quickly. So in our case, I've just set a little maximum. We're not going to write more than 3,000 records to the to the you know to our screen but we are going to continue to count all the records as they come in and we'll see how this looks um, but basically um, what we want to do here is we have our start stream method we're going to look at this later there's an upload file thing we're going to we're going to that's a sneak peek of what we're going to get to see in a, in a little moment um, but basically we'll have a button that's going to start our stream for us but here we go. This is this is how we do this. So we have our fetch. We're going to be fetching from our server. We're going to be taking the body and we're going to be piping it through. And the first thing we're piping it through is actually what's known as a text decoder stream. These are this is another type of stream that's kind of built into our web streams API. But because the chunks are coming through the network in array buffers, this transform will translate it back into text. If you know you're going to be receiving text, then you know in our case, um, you know, new line delimited JSON, this just translates it back into text so that we can work with it um, without having to translate the buffers ourselves. So we're going to pipe that through our line by line transform, then to our DOM appending uh, transform and or sorry, you know, DOM appending writer, and then we should be able to get um, you know everything working to the screen. One thing I need to do here So this one I didn't have here before, but I have this now. It's a text encoder stream. So the you know the analog to the text decoder stream. It's the flip side. When we're sending this to our you know um, response object, we want to encode it in buffer before we get there. When it's coming out of here, it's coming out of a string. Um, so we want to encode that in buffers before we send it over the network, and then decode it when we get there. All right. So I have a little. Okay, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to share. Um, let's just take a look. Should be, oh, there, um, where is it? Webstream, there we go. Okay, so this is my little, um, my little web page. So we have our counter up here, our list. Now let's start streaming. Hopefully, let's see if we can see the network here. Oops, let's take a look. Oops, just. Oh, it looks like, oh, I think I killed my server. Just one sec. <laughs> um, let me just, okay, that should work now. No, I don't have that one running. Sorry, I think I accidentally killed both of my servers. Let me just start those up again. OK, so this should be, there we go. Let's start our stream. Cool. All right, so you saw that was like instant, right? We, that's, that's the power of streaming your responses. Now, you can see we've already read 20,000. Now, of course, you know, this server is running on my network. So let's see what that looks like when we maybe slow it down to uh, you know, even just fast you know, 3G, see if we can see that a little better. Right. Even with that, you can see the records being read in se sequence, so they're going up. But you know, if we're reading a lot of data from our server, um, we can still show something like right away, right? I mean, that was almost instant. We're still reading records as we speak, but we have a whole bunch already, right? It's already there, um, and that was, you know, in terms of time to first bite, uh, definitely a first contentful paint 
that's you know that's that's almost immediate. So there's a lot of there's a lot of you know cool stuff you can do on maybe some of your websites uh, to take advantage of this, and it's been around for a little while. Um, so you know that's that's pretty cool. All right, let's get back to our presentation. It's still. <laughs> Still reading, sorry, not 20,000 records, 200,000 records I meant. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna kill a DOM pretty quick. All right, I'm going to stop. And one last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about request streams. This will be pretty short. This is the last bit. Um, so they've been fully available since 2022, so they're pretty, pretty new. Um, but basically, yeah, when, when it comes to response, we don't have to just stick with response streaming. Um, you know, we can actually now stream requests as well. Now, this is 2022 and it's available in Chrome. It doesn't actually exist in Firefox right now. I don't know the support for the others right, right off the top of my head, but uh, it does work in Chrome. And basically, we can provide a stream to the request body. So this can allow us to do things like stream user-generated content, such as audio or video, in real time for processing on our server. Uh, this is still a really new feature, like I said. So there are some caveats to using it. So HTTP does allow for you to receive a response before you are done sending a request. And this is known as full duplex. However, this feature is, was so little known before recently that it is not actually implemented on any browsers right now. So in the browser, the request needs to be fully sent before a response can start. This is known as half duplex. And servers can support full duplex. So to get around the incompatibility, you need to specify half duplex in your request. And now, additionally, there are some other considerations that need to be made. Streaming requests require cores enabled and will trigger a pre-flight on each request. Uh, streaming requests have a body, but not a content length header. So HTTP 1 expects a content length uh, header for every request. Um, so you can use chunked encoding to work around this, uh, where each chunk gets its own content length header. Um, but HTTP 2 and 3 don't have this problem since data is always chunked when sending requests. Then lastly, the server itself needs to be stream request enabled. Luckily, Node is. All right, last, de last demo before we wrap this up. Uh, we are actually going to build a quick request. Uh, we've already got most of it set up. So let me stop here and try and get through this one pretty quick. Um, this is going to be quick. Yeah, yeah, we have, it's going to be. Yeah, we have like three questions that uh, <laughs> our audience wanted to make for you. <laughs> All right, maybe I can just, um, here, let me just get, so we are going to, uh, okay, let me, let me do this quick. I can show you. Uh, okay, so this is an HTTP2 server. I'm working with HTTP2 in Node. Um, I'll get through this pretty quick. But basically, um, the server accepts all requests and sends all requests as a stream. So when you are working with HTTP2, you're always working with streams. Um, so uh, basically, um, basically, all I'm doing here is I'm taking my um, the stream I get. Now I have to, I have to, the, the, basically when I get, uh, where is this? This is kind of a little backwards. When I get a get, so I'm gonna stream, I'm gonna stream the data to the server and then I'm gonna request it back. You know, and I'm gonna request it back um, so that I can print it to the page basically. Um, so the receiver, basically the stream, when we get our get request, we save that, we save that stream. Then when we get our post request to get our data, we take that receiver, which is our get request, and start writing to it from our post request after our data has been transformed. Okay, so quickly, I know that's not the best description. Um, and then with our file upload, I do want to show this because it is kind of cool. <laughs> so I have a file upload field that I get, and you can get your fi your file that you receive can actually, has a stream property, a stream method, so you can get a file stream from it, and then you send, you put this file stream in the body, as you can see here, duplex set to half, and then basically I'm doing the same thing when I get it back as I did before, um, so we are posting to, so this is, so as you can see, the, the request is sent before the post request is sent before the get request, but on here it's kind of acting in reverse. Uh, I don't have enough time to explain that entirely, um, but let me just 
should work out of the box. So I'm going to kill this and okay. And one last. Let's reset this. Oh no! Somehow my server died. Oh, it's the wrong one. Right. Choose a file. Let's choose our um, uh, where is this? Oops. Come on. Let's choose our input file. And look, there we go. So we streamed the file up to the server. It was transformed on the server and then streamed back all in one continuous request, basically. And if we look at, see, we can see the send, the send is still pending here, but we've started to receive our fetch, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Um, yeah, we're still receiving our, we're still receiving data here. So it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, anyways, <laughs> I know that it was a little rusty at the end, but that is it, I promise. Um, cool. All right. So I know it's a lot of stuff. I'm um, happy to, I know we only got like a minute or so, but I can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess that we don't have time to, to do like the, the Q&A right now. Uh, Vivian, do we know if we can do only one or yeah. the time? Is yeah, I think we're able to squeeze in one. Okay. So I will just made like um, the question that Eva made it. Uh, so he's asking this, um, is this possible to leverage web streams for front-end use cases in browser applications when doing complex work such as graphics or digital signal processing? Uh, sure. You, I mean, you, you mean from a front-end perspective, if, if we're doing thinking on the web, yeah. Um, one of the most common use cases for web streams currently is to do things like that in web workers, which are kind of like... Uh, which are kind of like worker thread equivalent for the browser. So you can actually spun up new threads in the browser uh, that make use of multiple, you know, that will make use of different CPUs on your, on, you know, on the server, or sorry, on your computer uh, to do work. So yes, you can, you can use a transferable stream, send it to a web worker, process whatever you need to on the, on the web and get it sent back. Great, awesome. So I think that our time is over, uh, but we got like other two questions from George and Brian. So please, if you could uh, both um, add Devon on LinkedIn and he's open to, to answer your questions there. So I'm sorry because uh, we out of time. So it was amazing because of that. So it was uh, very useful. I think all of you enjoying like the coding session. So uh, thank you everyone for your demonstration it was very helpful. It was amazing. Thank you all for joining uh, in, in, in this call uh, with us today. I think Vivian is all in sharing on the on the chat our our programmation for, for the last um, events that we have for the day. And she also is uh, sharing uh, Devon social media there so you can follow uh, Devon work and etc. So there is like his Twitter and LinkedIn. So go ahead and add him and follow him. Uh, it's going to be uh, a way that you can learn more. Uh, so again, thank you so much, Devon, for your uh, presentation for us today. So it was awesome. And thank you all for joining uh, into this Tech Talk. And I hope that you can uh, keep with us for the other talks that we're going to have uh, during the day. So thank you all. Have a good rest of your day and enjoy our global remote job fair. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Definitely enjoyed. Thank you. Bye, everyone.